record that one and also record uh, the session on big blue button there we go so yeah so what I was talking about uh, is that we almost have uh, everything covered there are just little pieces that I have to fit in so um, the overview of polymorphism I'm gonna go through it probably today and then I'm gonna go over function templates if needed again the next day that you're coming in we're gonna talk about input and output refinements which, which, which is going to be next Monday this Friday we have Good Friday right so uh, the Good Friday is a holiday I know everybody's sitting at home um, I, I believe you want to be with your family and I don't think legally I can have a class I would because every day is a holiday now uh, doesn't make any difference for me I can actually take class on Friday so uh, uh, we always have a test Brian every single time and if you check your email um, that's very okay no problem if you're late all I'm saying is that check your emails check the announcements I we not only have tests every time but a day or two days before I'll tell you exactly what the question of the test is so you so you will know so essentially if I for example if we go on on the test today so this is uh, this is what I changed with uh, respect let me just bring that thing back in its place and I'm gonna open it over here let me just see if I can hmm. okay so when we are having the test that we're gonna have it every day and we're gonna have three of them on the last day um, you're gonna know exactly what the topics are like this is, as you see over here it says first assessment test uh, uh, why is this first assessment test do it's final assessment see my brain says final my hands print type uh, <laughs> my hands type uh, first let me edit that and make that final so final assessment and don't send the copy There's, there is no need for it submit yeah so final assessment test two I will say this is just a reminder tomorrow there will be uh, the final assessment test number two in this test we'll be doing inheritance initializing base classes overriding shadow the base class functions the URS for notes for this test are yada yada so I'll give you that you gotta study these things when you're coming and it's gonna be and that's gonna be the test and I will talk about uh, milestone six people use your microphones there's no problem uh, Brian let's uh, make it um, as human as possible okay, um, okay? Uh, and don't don't worry to interrupt me just say excuse me and 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 we'll we'll, we'll talk okay excuse me for that. yes yes sir so this the final assessment is right now right today it is uh, so the final assessment essentially is going to be at the end of each class so okay. 20 minutes or 25 minutes to the end of the class the test begins um, um, anybody wants to do, you want me to talk about the final assessment now and then not talk about it at the end or you want me to, uh, let me just show you this and be done with it so you know exactly when final assessment is so let me stop sharing this so uh, that's when final assessments going to be so if you look at it you'll see it starts at um, 12.05 and uh, by 12.10 you reply you answer it you're gonna get 95 percent by 12.15 so if you ha answer with the within the first 10 minutes you're gonna be eight, get 85 percent and next 10 minutes uh, next five minutes 75 next five minutes 65 next five minutes 50 if you get to 50 don't answer it anymore wait because it's gonna be till not seven o'clock you have time go find out what the answer is and submit it by seven o'clock at night and you get 50 percent of the mark if um, you you can't do it by then after that before 12 o'clock at night it's going to be 25 percent and that's that's I try to design the questions to uh, going to be like that um, and usually when I say 10 minutes over here if I can do it in 35 seconds to like a minute it means you can do it in 10 minutes to get your A 
if you if I can do it in 15 seconds it means I get an A plus which means a 95% so if you do it and they are very short to the point questions and before the test begins two minutes before the text three minutes I actually show you the question so you don't have to waste time reading it you can just open it up and start doing it the process is always the same always you are going to uh, issue the command uh, source tilde far that uh, slash activate then you put 244 and a b for this session but for the next sessions are naa or nbb depending on a class that you're in so today's nab nab test two so always it's going to be that so when you're actually doing the test the test is always this i'm just going to write it over here one more time so you see uh, I don't know how big I can let me see if, let me let me just type it over here and see what happens. So it's source tilde farda the Soleimanlu slash activate. Now if you want to be able to do it quickly, use the knowledge that you have earned in other classes and make that an alias. So you can just type that in two so you can just write for example test and that thing comes up activate and then it's going to be 244 and a b test and then two okay let me see if i can make it smaller can I? no that's it okay no uh, and nothing that's it so let me just do it let me just do it in, in, in bigger thing so let me clear it yeah, i'm gonna make it bigger so it actually fits Ugh. But Dad, you actually mentioned that there's going to be six questions Give me a second, give me oh. a second. Source tilde for that dot Soleimanlu uh, slash activate 244 NAB test 2. So the 2 is the one that changes. Okay? The 2 is the one that changes. So, um, and by typing 2, you actually. Uh, uh, um, it, it starts the uh, the it starts the test and after you start the test you don't need to change to any directory you don't need to do anything all you need to do next is to and this is again standard immediately after you do this if it's open and it doesn't tell you that it's closed then you can use any editor that you like pick an editor that you can edit a file and save that's all you need to do with it edit a file and save i like nano so i'll go nano you can do vi vim whatever you like q2.cpp that is what you do so you enter that's going to start uh you, you you start editing the, the 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 program and when you are comfortable with what you have done when you are comfortable with what you have done this is what you do so the next thing you do after that you can actually type the command to submit it which means you can say just whoops sorry you can just say submit and hit enter you don't need to write anything because you already wrote all those information submit gets your test and submits it right to the uh, to the uh, oh sorry I, I put over the sauce okay <laughs> that's not sauce that's source <laughs> okay let me fix that again one more time my, my apologies let me see if I can actually do it uh, how can I clean something up over here mm just a second just a second just a second let me clean this up and type it correctly my apologies on that so you are doing not sauce but source so So let me just write this. So it's going to be, I don't know why it's not writing. Okay, one more. 
more time. Hmm. For some reason, it's all, I keep trying to write and it doesn't write. Give me two seconds, I'm sorry. doesn't want to change the color for some reason oh there you go fixed okay finally okay source tilde far that the Suleiman live slash activate 244 and a B test 2 and then enter over here okay so after doing that you do this and finally you say submit here submit and you hit enter or you can write do and hit enter okay uh, sometimes I add a little bit of spice to it and, and I and I give uh, uh, students option to do a bonus thing to get more marks if that's the case then you will be able to type a command like this Instead of submit, you write bonus and you hit enter. Not today. You're not having bonus today. If you have bonus, you'll see in the text of your program says if you do such and such, there is a bonus mark. So these are the things that you do and then you submit um, and you got to get your mark. I'll explain to you what the questions are at 12 o'clock sharp. Okay. <clears throat> Any other question? Yeah, for that. Uh, so you were saying that we were going to have around six questions. So how is it going to be the time limit for the like the last day where we're going to have more than one question? So it's going to be at right when it starts. So for all those people who are we're stuck in traffic, and that's a pure joke. I hope that you're not getting out of the, the home that you're in. Or the place that you're in but um, I start sharp at the beginning so next this Friday it's holiday there is nothing but the Friday after that is the last day of the class we're gonna have three questions coming in one is gonna be exactly at the beginning of the class which means gonna be for <clears throat> sorry my apologies just let me clear my throat just give me two seconds So next Friday at 8 o'clock sharp for section B and at 9.50 sharp for section A. We're going to have the first of the three tests. Then half an hour later sharp, this is going to be the next one. And half an hour later sharp, next one. So as soon as you come in, you will see that you can start doing the test. Doing the test. Probably I'm going to make it 8.05, something like that. Because you only need 20 minutes for each of it. Um, and if you get to the 50% point, just stop it because you can do it later on till 7 o'clock at night. So it's the same thing. Uh, you start first one at the first half an hour, the second one in the second half an hour, and last one, the last one has got to be on the third half an hour, and you're done. Okay? Or oh, uh, we have one hour and 50 minutes. I'm going to divide it by three, whatever it is. Excuse me for that? Yes. So in total, we'll have six questions for our finals, right? We have yeah. no idea. I think it's going to be seven, not six. Or well, maybe six. I don't know. Yeah, because today we have one. It's very one. possible that another day I'm going to tell you you're going to have two today. So oh. I'll try to, the more I, I do, the better for you is. So if it's six, I'm going to drop one lowest one. Okay. Mm. If I have eight, I'm going to drop two lowest ones. Okay. okay, so it's always better to have more questions. If you have more questions, you have more chance of getting a mark. That's okay. Okay? okay. Regarding to workshops, I'm drop. I, I, one workshop is going to be dropped, the lowest workshop. Okay, so um, any of the workshops that is lowest in all, it's going to be dropped. All your workshops, anything that you have submitted till today, tomorrow, they, all the marks are going to go up. So you're going to see exactly what marks you have for whatever you have. <clears throat> so um, if you have already sent me something regarding the marks that are a mistake, uh, please wait. Tomorrow, get all the marks that you have so you can send me one email for everything that I have to fix. And then I'll fix it for you. 
Um, what else do I wanted to tell you? Uh, milestone six we're going to talk about. Uh, any questions? No questions? Is the oh. uh, workshop uh, nine the last one? Or is there a ten? No, no, no. Nine is the last one. Nine is the last one. Okay. okay. I may drop two lowest ones. I don't know. I have to take a look and see what the overall marks are for the class. Because of all the ordeal of the situation that you're in and everybody's stressed, um, I'll, I'll see what I can do. I'll try. Maybe I'm going to drop two of them. So we'll see. I see Aloriza loves to me to do so. So just for Ariza's sake, because he's my favorite student, probably I'll do it. But I'll let you know. Don't count on it. Do your workshop nine the best you can. Get the highest mark, and we'll see. Um, uh, what else? Oh, the test for the next day that you're coming in. <clears throat> let me tell you what's going to be the test for the next day, which is the next Monday. Uh, again, I announce it over here, and then I'll mention it too. So, <clears throat> so this is OOP. Which one is this? This is 244. Okay. <clears throat> so we talked about drive file. So abstract base classes and func virtual functions. Next test is the topic of that one. Okay. Abstract base classes, virtual functions. I'm going to, again, when I wrote the right, write the question, I'm going to tell you what is it going to be done in the question. So you go focus on that one and do it. <clears throat> okay. So there's no excuse that we don't have enough time. I'm even telling you what the question is. All you need to do is to be able to do what you need to do in that 5-10 minutes to get 80, 95% or 85%. Okay? <clears throat> Any other question before I uh, explain milestone 6? Okay. Uh, and you know, uh, sometimes you will see in the text of the question, like when you are actually working on Q2.cpp, at the top says, do this to get a bonus mark, which means um, those people are supposed to do it who are really good and know exactly what the answer is and like how it's how it's done. So instead of submitting the the work, uh, instead of typing submit, they can type bonus, which means now their output's going to be compared to the bonus version. And when you have a bonus version, you can get up to 120% instead of 100%, 100%. So it, it makes up for all the marks that you have throughout the semester and everything. So that bonus marks adds 20% to whatever you get. So if you answer it, say, 75%, so if you actually get to 75%, then, uh, um, so 75%, if you uh, if you get seventy five percent, then uh, twenty percent, uh, it's gonna uh, get boosted up to ninety percent. That's how it's going to be. So again, uh, or if you get hundred percent, it becomes hundred and twenty, which means if you have, uh, it's gonna bring up the whole average. Uh, if I if I if I if it's a place that I can actually give you a bonus part, okay. <clears throat> No problem. Anyone else? Any questions? Okay, let's go through um, milestone six to see what we are, what we need to do. What about milestone five? What about milestone five, Jackie? Um, never talk about milestone five. I don't think. Should we talk about? Anybody wants me to talk about milestone five? Yes, please find that. Okay. Milestone 5 is actually pretty simple. It's uh, <clears throat> um, So let's, uh, I'll start with Milestone 5 and then Milestone 6. All right, so at the beginning of the class, whenever I say, is there any question about anything, let me know. This is what I'm talking about. So if, if there's any questions about milestones and things, let me know. I'm, I'll let you know. I'll explain how things happen. Okay. So <clears throat> for milestone for milestone five <clears throat> for milestone five um, 
what you have is that you have a class vehicle you created in milestone four um, you uh, simply inherited in two classes car and motorcycle and um, you create one uh, boolean to each motorcycle and car for car it's a car wash flag for the motorcycle it's a sidecar flag so you add one extra thing to it in the constructor that you receive all the things that you receive in a constructor of a car is the same thing as vehicle you just initialize the vehicle with it <clears throat> there is no additional uh, member functions that you need to add the only thing that you need to do is to implement the read and write operator overloads uh, sorry read and write um, uh, functions which it it tells you exactly how to do it step by step so for example for read it says <clears throat> uh, it overrides you know what does it mean it shadows overrides it means it, it the signature is identical it creates the exact same function that uh, the vehicle has whatever you called it read scan I don't know what you call it whatever you called it that function for your vehicle has to be overwritten first so then you check to see if comma if car is in comma separated value it will read the so first you're going to call the read of the base class and after you call the read of the base class uh, you read one uh, boolean value because this one has an extra boolean value right the first read reads the vehicle part of the car so if all the records that you have in a file um, or uh, screen it doesn't make any difference first those things are going to be read then a boolean for car wash then ignores uh, uh, whatever is left up to and including a new line character which means you just do a get line and and get it up to backslash n and you finished so that's for the comma separated one if it's not comma separated value it means now you are doing getting it from a screen first you have to prompt what you are getting so you will pro prompt car information entry you're gonna print that one then you call the read of the base class the read of vehicle already gets the information about vehicle you have one more thing to read that is the car being car washed or not so you do a car washed while parked yes or no if I were you I would create a yes function in utils.h h because this yes or no is happening everywhere so write a function that actually does this prompts a message looks for a y or n lowercase or uppercase if it's invalid it prints this message and that's it so that's all you need to do um, and for write is the exact same way so you go through it it tells you exactly what to do so you start uh, you overwrite the write uh, and uh, then you, you do it exactly as what it is so it says if it's in it's in invalid, invalid empty state then you're gonna uh, print this thing on all stream whatever it's printing and um, if it's not in an invalid empty state then if if it's in comma separated mo mode first you print a single C now this single C that you see over here that single C essentially in the uh, in the file it tags every record so when you are actually reading it in milestone 6 you know the record that you're reading is for a car or for a vehicle this is a C but if you look at a motorcycle when motorcycle writes motorcycle writes an M so it actually flags what is being written so when you are reading you know which one you are reading so that's that so first you first you uh, uh, write it so I'm essentially reading what I'm saying first you write a little uh, uh, one C over there uh, then uh, so if it's in comma separated multiple print this otherwise you're gonna print vehicle type car so if it's on the screen you're gonna tell to the user what is getting printed so you're gonna write vehicle type car if it's a comma separated value you just put a C and a comma then you will call the right of the vehicle the rest will be printed automatically and at the end if the car wash flag is true you're going to type with car wash if it's not you're going to call right without car wash then you return the old stream and the 
motorcycle is identical to this one it's a waste of your time if I want to explain it to you it does the exact same thing the difference is that it's all with a motorcycle that's all uh, and the difference it with the right is that if the sidecar flag is on it will type with sidecar flag and if it's off it won't print anything that's the only difference the rest of it are exactly the same that one prints a C this one prints an M and seriously you start doing this it shouldn't take you more than 20 minutes 30 minutes to write this it's a very simple thing um, you are not writing any codes very simple the only thing that you are supposed to do is that yes yes or no thingy and if you already have written a yes or no function in your utils then you're good to go just just use it otherwise uh, write one write a yes or no because you're gonna have another one in milestone six any question about this milestone five any question one any question two that's milestone five now let's talk about milestone six actually instead of this let me open up a PDF reader that's easier I can highlight and I can do things on it so Seneca 244 Dev project and milestone six so for milestones six let's take this out of the way <clears throat> you're essentially editing your milestone two so you copy milestone two you put all the files for milestone five that you have your vehicle your all the files menu car everything's in here okay you put everything in here and uh, you start uh, implementing it this way so essentially first you create uh, a global variable a global constant variable and um, whatever you want to call it it is supposed to represent the maximum number of parking spots so essentially in your uh, car you are going to have in your car you're going to have an array in your car you are going to have let me get my pen there we go in your car you are going to have an array of uh, vehicles vehicle pointers and it's maximum of 100 which means any parking that we create cannot have more can more than 100 parking spots it can only have maximum of 100 if anybody wants to use more than that they should actually go to uh, recompile the code and make that 100 over here more so the one that, that I mentioned 100 that constant value that is 100 which means it cannot go more than that then uh, you create another property called number of spots which essentially will be set in a constructor of uh, parking so when you create a parking you can actually tell how many uh, parking spots you want to have in that one so uh, hey, professor we cannot see your drawing it just shows a previous submission thing you cannot see my drawing yeah, like you said, you were going to draw the pointer? No, no, I'm not oh, drawing anything. No, no, if I draw, you will oh. see. If I draw, okay. you will see. See, now I'm drawing. Can you see the drawing? No. No? Well, no, we still see no. the submission thing. The submission. So why is it not sharing my screen? Let me try one more time. Now, thank you very much for letting me know. Everybody's so quiet. Nobody's saying anything. Let's see if it's going to go. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, I had to stop yeah, and re yeah. I had to stop and restart it. Please people, please, please, please take a look and see what's going on. So, so all the things that I talked about milestone 5, you were just listening, right? <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh there's a massive mark on your screen if you didn't erase it. 
Oh, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll, I'll wipe it out. Uh, so, uh, if you look at the YouTube video, that is recorded because it's actually recording the screen. So, uh, watch the YouTube video for the part about, uh, about Milestone 5. Okay? Um, uh, so, you'll see the screen over there. Um, uh, anyways, so let's continue. Uh, so the one that is posted on YouTube, this one, uh, if you look at the uh, big blue button, you will see exactly what you have seen, which is nothing. Okay, so let's continue. So <clears throat> when you create the parking module, um, uh, you create a constant variable that is going to show the maximum, that's going to keep the maximum number of parking spots. And then you're going to create an additional uh, mandatory property, which is going to... Uh, um, uh, have the number of parking spots in it. So, uh, as I was mentioning, when you actually um, create, uh, when you uh, so this is the main that you're going to see. So when you are instantiating your parking, let's make it bigger so you can see it properly. Everybody can see this. Are we good? Yes. All right. So when you create a parking spot, you modify its uh, constructor. You add an additional thing that tells how many parking spots you can have in this parking okay in this case it's going to be 10. the initial uh, file that i'm providing for you um, is uh, has already nine files in it so let me see what can i open it with to be visible nicely yeah this is good oh this is oh so this is an empty one in this case if you do something and it gets empty I I have added a file over there that I call it back so it's when you look at it it actually says uh, parking data dot SV SCS comma separate SCV dot back and I have nine records over there ready for you so if you use those it's easier uh, it's a good idea to use that um, um, so what happens is that if you do something and you lose the data, simply copy this back on parkingdata.scv so you can, as CSV so you can uh, redo your tests. So um, this this file is already in the repository, the back one. Copy the back one over SC, SCV and then you're gonna have what you had. Okay. Uh, so again, you create the um, uh, the um, you, you modify the um, the constructor of parking to receive uh, uh, maximum number of uh, uh, parking spots. Uh, sorry, the, the number of parking spots this parking has, and uh, uh, that's what's going to uh, come over here. So essentially. Uh, you're going to set the value of uh, number of parking spots using the constructor that you will see. Okay, but uh, this number of parking spots, it has a certain limit, so it cannot be less than 10 or more than uh, the no maximum number of parking spots. So create a yada yada yada. I'm mentioning it somewhere, I think. It, I think it's in a constructor. Okay. Uh, so additional recommended properties, depending on what logic you are using to go through the parking, it's a good idea to have number of parked vehicles. So at any moment of time, you can actually know how many cars are now parked in the vehicle. You can always do that by going through the array and count all the pointers that are not null and find out how many cars in there, but it's time consuming and it's difficult logic instead of doing that anytime you park a car you can add it to the variable and when you any anytime the car is taken out you can reduce that variable by by one and the number that is in there can tell you if the parking is empty or not uh, is a parking spot always start with index if you have if you have microphone please stop me and ask the question that way okay and you don't need to do it now but what I mean is that I may not see that and not answer to your question and by the time I do it you've lost the, ch the, the chain of thought and, and it's, uh, it's it's gonna be over parking spots start always from one but the index always start from zero which means if you like if a, a, a car is parked in uh, uh, is pointed by 
um, the third element of the, the, the element number three of the uh, parking array, then the parking spot will be four. So it's essentially index plus one, if that's the, the that was the question. So uh, one more thing. Let me just mute Rodrigo because he is forgotten to me. There you go. All right. So yeah, as I was saying. Um, um, yeah, so it's a good idea to have a, uh, that additional member variable. If you don't have it, it's fine. Uh, don't don't forget that your parking is already working. Okay, so the structure of parking and the way it's supposed to be done and the menu and everything is already set for you. So that is working for you from milestone two. You have to just modify the functions that I explained over there to you, one by one, and the functions that your uh, the prototype of the the parking that you create is going to come back come to life so it, it, it'll, it'll actually start working so construction modification what you're going to do to the constructor you're going to add the number of spots and you're going to add the number of spots uh, set the number of spots of the parking to that and uh, uh, it tells you exactly uh, what valid, validations it has, if the number of is invalid or less than 10 or more than maximum number of yada yada, then the parking is set to an invalid empty state. So if they put 9 over there, it's invalid. You're going to set it to invalid. It should be more equal, 10 or more, uh, up to 100. Also, you got to make sure... Uh, oh, and one more thing that we have in member variables. Uh, <laughs> Is did I I think I think I forgot to write it over here. Maximum parking spots, additional recommended yada yada. So I didn't actually write over here that one. Ha <laughs> ha! I should add it. So yeah, so you have to have a vehicle pointer array. I thought I did I write it. Maximum number of parking spots. Additional management properties. Okay, so. Uh, oh, there you go. Create an array of vehicle pointers that act like parking spots in a parking. Use the maximum number of parking spot constant value for the size of the array. So essentially, I'm telling you to create an array of pointers of vehicles and make it to be 100 in this case, because the maximum number is set to 100. So that's that. So uh, in your constructor, make sure that all those pointers are null. Set them to null. Uh, also make sure that all the, the element of park is initial to null pointer. The rest of the logic of the constructor remains the same as it was in milestone 2, which means load data is supposed to be called in here the way we mentioned last time. So whatever you, the, the load data were supposed to do in milestone 2, it's the same thing over here. You have to follow the same rule. So parking module logic uh, how it let, is going to work. This is the overall logic of the of the application, which means um, you're going to have initially you are going to have uh, a completely blank uh, uh, a completely blank Let me just set this. Yeah, you're going to have a completely blank. Um, array so it's going to be like this so that you're not going to have anything in here you're going to have something like this completely blank so this is what you're going to have this means so the and they are all null because they are all null it means you have an empty parking the number of slots are the number of slots are pointed uh, are are set by the number of spots member variable that you have so only thing that you need to check over here is those number of elements and the rest of the elements over here are completely unused in your program you don't need to care about them only those uh, pointers that are less than the number of spots that, that you have which in this case is 12 our example um, 
so what happens is that as parking uh, cars come to park what you do is essentially uh, check so you start from index zero and keep going the first one that you see is null then you immediately create uh, a, a, a vehicle in there so if the first one that is coming mo is in motorcycle the first one's going to point to a motorcycle then the second one comes in a car you put it over there the third one you put it over there these are all dynamic the fourth one you come over there the, the fifth one you come over you, you put it over there now let's say car number one is gone so you don't have car number one anymore if that's the case then what you do you just remove that one out of the memory so now your second element is null. now if another car comes in and you want to park that car because you start searching from the beginning as soon as you hit the first null then you're going to stop and set that one to the new car that you have therefore that's gonna it's gonna look like that and that's why we I wrote it like this so if you actually take a look at what we have over here this is what you see um, I don't know what this area is in here I think I just left it over there by mistake so ignore this array that you see over there. this arrow that blue arrow over here is nothing so anyway so this is a parking that has been working for a while so as you see the available spot for parking vehicles are the ones that are null so if the next available spot in this scenario will be spot number three that is index number two and it keeps going like this now you the cars come in and go out so as soon as the, the car come in you get its information you build a dynamic object of the type of the thing that you have either a car or a motorcycle then you set that pointer to the address of what you created dynamically and that means the car is parked as soon as somebody wants to come and get the car away they enter the license plate you already have um, um, an operator overloader that compares the license plate of a vehicle to a string so you simply go through every single element of the every single element of the of the array any of them that is not null you compare to see if that's the license plate if it's not you keep going to the next one until you find it as soon as you find the vehicle you want to you want to remove you remove that vehicle you make that one null, uh, null and uh, that's it the car is out so that's that. that yes didn't, didn't you tell me that null is like an ancient value that we shouldn't use pardon me didn't you tell me that null is an ancient value that we shouldn't use when i say null it's null ptr okay read between oh, the lines okay. okay we don't have a null it's all null ptr when we say null i'm talking about the concept of null not the variable null okay thank you very much for the question yeah so when i say null it's not n-u-l-l -L in ipc144 it's null ptr because it's a pointer okay uh, what i what i mean is that the value is null so yeah so that's that uh the next so yeah so now so this is that's parking and returning call now you have two more functions one is called end of the day and the other one is called exit program so if you exit program you don't do anything you just ask the user hey you want to exit the user says yes again another yes no function to be reused so you say yes you can exit the car exits uh, sorry the parking exit in a destructor of the car it's a good idea to call the save data and save data will save everything in a file so the next time you load the park you load parking uh, the parking application what is going to do it's going to load the data and put everything back in and how does it put it back in it goes through the file that we have so what was the file this was the file so it goes through the file it says okay it's a C so I'm gonna build a car then it's gonna put the rest inside the car it sets the, creates a dynamic car looks at the parking spot the parking spot is one so it's gonna put it in the array one minus one which is zero so it's going to put it in the first one then it reads the second one it's two three and it keeps going like that so let's say this one is gone and we don't have this 
So it's going to be one and so let's say this is our our file. Actually, let me just do like this. This is our file. We only have three cars. So it reads the the, the first one. It's one. It allocates a car and makes this parking spot that is one minus one, which is zero, point to this car. Then it reads this one and it says, okay, it's parking spot eight. It's a car. It creates a dynamic car. Eight minus one is seven. It makes this one to point to it. And this one is nine. Nine minus one, that's eight. It makes this one point to it. And program show, goes to the menu. Everything starts. Your parking starts with three cars in it. That's exiting the program. Now, if you don't exit the program, there is another one that says, uh, uh, what was the name of the menu? I don't even recall what the name of the menu was. Uh, um, it is closed parking. When you do closed parking, it's actually end of the day. So it's 11 o'clock at night and they want to close down the parking. And if they, they close it because it's not an overnight parking, they have to tow all the cars that are inside and, and, and uh, let them get towed away. For that, what happens is that so close down unlike exit program will go through every single element of the array up to of course 12 in this case the number of spot if it's not null it issues a towing ticket for it and deletes that one and it keeps going through through it so it prints it deletes it prints it deletes it prints it deletes it and it's done everything becomes null then it exits the program because in a destructor you are saving the file it saves nothing in a file which means the file will be blanked. The file will be overwritten with a blank file. And therefore, the next time you are running the, the parking, parking starts with no cars in it because the file will be essentially blank. And one last thing that that is asked you to do is to list parked vehicles, which essentially is a simple loop going through every single element. If it's not null, print it. Because print is virtual, the latest version is going to get car called car will print a car, bicycle will, sorry, motorcycle will print a motorcycle, and you're going to have a list of everything's coming out. So that's, in a nutshell, what your uh, Milestone 6 is supposed to do. Now, uh, I have essentially, I literally opened Milestone 2 and edited it. So I said, every single function that you had over there that it was just printing something now it's printing something properly so is empty remains the same as ms2 nothing has changed parking status because you have the number of park uh, cars over there in, uh, instead of just printing seneca valley parking you print seneca valley parking then you say available available spots then you print the number of available parking spots and then these asterisks and go out. So it actually tells you how many cars at the top of each menu. It's going to tell you how many parking spots you have available. Park vehicle function does exactly what I explained to you. This part is for BTP. You don't need to do it. Okay, that's for BTP 200. For you, you don't need to do that. Essentially, uh, it it's it does it explains exactly what's happening in here i better not read it out for you because it's just a waste of your time go through it see what it is the next time you're coming in ask me a question or tomorrow ask me during the office hours i'll, I'll be online tomorrow all day so uh, ask me any questions that you want uh, that you uh, need for it i'll try to rec any questions that you have about milestones the milestone uh, I will record the session that I'm answering you the questions and I'm going to put it on, on YouTube so you know what it is. So if anybody comes in with a question, everyone else will hear that question so you'll know. And of course, you can ask me now too. Uh, park vehicle functions. So it, it just puts everything that I just mentioned in detail so you know what the sequence of things are. Uh, so essentially, when park vehicle function is called, you show that uh, sub menu. It shows uh, what do you want to call park. You want to park a motorcycle, cycle, a car, or cancel. If it's a motorcycle, you create a pointer of vehicle, um, and you create a dynamic motorcycle. You read it from the screen. You put it in a pointer, and you uh, put it in a first available parking spot, and you're done. 
if it's a car it's the exact same thing but instead of motorcycle you uh, instantiate a, a, you instantiate a, 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 a car uh, or a motorcycle yeah uh, and if, if they say cancel you simply uh, cancel the the, the 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 action and don't do anything for uh, what else uh, list the uh, park vehicles you know what it is just list them go through them one by one and show them and put an line at the end um, to return you simply ask for the license plate you search through the list if you find it you find it if you don't find it you say it's not found okay simply simple as that uh, so if they enter some wrong license plate number then you're gonna say not found list park vehicles you go through them one by one whichever is not null print it those parking function I already mentioned it this just shows what the sequence of things that are supposed to happen so uh, you go through every single uh, element of uh, vehicle if it's not null you print towing ticket towing request uh, you uh, put this line print the vehicle you delete it you go to next one as simple as that exit parking gap it's exactly like MS2 I don't need to mention anything uh, load data file oh, uh, that's exactly what I mentioned uh, it will do exactly what I mentioned it would do so uh, uh, essentially what it's going to do one by one it's going to go through the record read the first character when the first character is read it can decide what it is uh, and then create a dynamic uh, information read the rest and all these things are already done so all you need to do is to read one character skip a comma if it's a car you instantiate the car and tell to call to read yourself and because car knows how to read itself in comma separated value all the information is going to go into a call if it's a motorcycle instantiate a motorcycle skip one character to skip the comma tell to motorcycle to read yourself in comma separated mode everything's going to be read and pushed into the in the Honda in the in the motorcycle and one by one you place it into the parking spot of the vehicle so if vehicle is two you put it in element one if vehicle is six you put it in element five if vehicle is nine you put it in the parking spot nine and that's it you go through it and you're done that's that's loading a, uh, uh, loading them one by one and save simply goes to sets them to comma separated and writes them because they already implemented it it's going to just write it properly in the file there is no problem with it you can add extra stuff if you want to if um, not really needed now the due dates are set like this I created three different types of submission uh, it's actually more than the three different types so it's going to be around s like six different ways that you can submit this thing uh, you can do a comprehensive submission which goes through every single validation make sure everything is done perfectly with this you get a hundred percent okay of course you can do the comprehensive one and add the skip uh, spaces uh, to it so if your spaces exactly don't match it will still submit it or skip new lines so there are two tags that you can two options that you can add just type submit it tells you on on matrix type tilde far that solimandu submit and don't put anything it gives you a helpline how to see what the due dates are how to submit it skipping uh, spaces or skipping new lines so if your formatting is not an exact thing and your spacing doesn't match it will still submit it of course it's going to let me know that you've done it you lose some mark but uh, it will still submit it that's the comprehensive one the simple one is the one that it checks the main functionalities of the program but it doesn't go through every single validation it won't go to the valid through the validation of the license plate to make sure everything's said it doesn't go through the validation of stuff if you do the simple one the validations that don't have to match exactly you get 75 percent for it and again uh, talk instead of typing a message can you simple submit and then work on company oh yeah yeah of course of course of course um, do your simple submission and work on, yeah 
I always pick up the best one and the latest one. Okay, so these are the two things. I always get your latest submission. If you're late, so if you're just done with it, do an open submission, which is a crappy submission. And then what is a crappy submission? Crappy submission is that uh, it doesn't check your output. It just submits whatever you have. As long as it compiles and you have no warnings, it submits it. 95% when you do such a submission, you get an F. Okay? So if you do an open submission, 95% it's an F. I have to look at your output. And when you do an open submission, you should demonstrate a comprehensive submission. So you have to do ex everything that your file can do. Okay? But if any parts missing, then you're going to miss the most. So if you do an open submission, and I see in your submission you are going through everything, but it's crooked and things doesn't work, probably you get a 50%, 55% out of it. I don't know. Or a 40% or a 30%. This is the last resort. Like your file compiles, it doesn't run properly, but you have to demonstrate the the maximum thing your file can, your, your program can do. If your program only parks then you have to only do the park if I don't see anything then you get zero okay I look at your output if your output is doing like two or three I'll give you a 30 percent a 40 percent mark uh, but if not it's just uh, a zero so open submission is the last resort your program compiles it does few things um, so you only demonstrate what it does and simple submission is not that picky. It goes through, it assumes that user is entering everything properly. Let's put it that way. So that's simple submission. I'm not going to go through validation with this one. Um, so that's the second submission and then uh, the open submission. You can always do the open submission first, then do a simple submission, then do a comprehensive one to make sure that you get some mark. Okay. So if your program compiles, runs kind of okay uh, but you need to do debug it so you, you can do an open submission just as is and then do a simple submission when it matches that then do a comprehensive submission you can always do that uh, any questions down to here <clears throat> okay uh, this time instead of creating the actually uh, the outputs I actually gave you an executable so the execution sample is there run the program on matrix to see how oh I actually didn't put it how well, let me just put it how so the execution sample is this is uh, you are writing uh, what was the command for it let me find out um, putty let me go to matrix let's send a college let's see a f so i'll log in as that one i forgot to put that one on so let me see which one was it not activate there you go. This is the one. So SDDS submitter, let me copy it. MS6 demo. Okay. So if you run this, it actually runs the parking thing for you. So you can see exactly how it works. Do whatever you want to do. See how it works. So I don't have to go through it. I'm just going to give you the sample submissions for the submission time, which is what you have to enter for the comprehensive submission or simple submission. So... Uh, fully functional yada yada run the program on may see how the program runs uh, uh, this is the sub um, demo uh, execution execution command and there you go so that's what it is uh, let's set it to consolas where is it? There you go, Gonzalez. And I'm going to make it 12. 
414 and enter okay and that's it so you run that and uh, that's gonna be it let me just see I'm just adding to a uh, to it right now so let me just add to the to the version I'm gonna say version 0 0.91 and I'm gonna say over here added the demo submission command okay and reduce the size oh, reduce the size make it italic save it and save the PDF save as and PDF save I'm gonna post this in two seconds so so that's what you're gonna do and uh, that's it. Uh, any questions about MS6? Any questions about MS6? Uh, excuse me? Yes. And so, remember, in three minutes, I have to tell you how to do the test because your test starts in five minutes. Go ahead. Yep. So I was doing the return function. Okay. And when I tried to use the bool function to compare the license plate of a car to a to a c string it says that there's no overlay function for that you did something wrong fix it <laughs> it means you did it wrong yeah, there's something that you have done that is not set properly and if it's not there overload it if it's not there overload it so it actually gets a constant character string it right and uh, a vehicle at left and returns true if the two are matched both lowercase so make it all lowercase and then compare okay if you recall that was the thing that i mentioned when you're actually doing comparison with an equal it could be it should be case insensitive okay any other question i uh I just want to ask, uh, is the final like a milestone due date is next month? It's it's written over there. Take a look at the document. Yeah. It's written over there. So these are in the in the. Uh, I'm not going to comment in here because if um, I may say something wrong, uh, I have it over there, so I don't have to tell it. Uh, take a look at the due dates in a, in the document, and if there is anything wrong with it, let me know. I'll, I'll fix it for you. Any other question? I'm actually posting the, um, committing the, the change so I can actually put it up right now. Any other question? No question? Okay, I'll stop sharing the screen and tell you how the test works. You know what the command for the test is. Uh, let me just do it over here. Uh, zero. Oh, not zero five. Uh, so, yes, yes, exit. There you go. So you see, it actually shows I had only one honka, whatever that is. Uh, so this is uh, four three four five four two two. Test two. Let me just double check if that it runs. Yes. So um, I'm going to copy this and paste it into the uh, chat so there you go this is the one and I'm gonna put it in the chat for uh, in Microsoft Teams too so they're in two places okay so one is in the uh, in Microsoft Teams and the other one is in the in big blue button and that's how how it uh, runs now let me stop uh, that and go through uh, what uh, the question is. So essentially, the question is this: that take a look at the question, please. Um, uh, the question looks like this. So you are having a class called Person. You have seen this class already in the notes that I that I sent you. So uh, that's. Let me just uh, stop the recording.